Hi everyone. So I just wanted to do a quick um, kind of deep dive into my score for the clip Colony um, that's available through the QTube. Um, so Brian had asked me to score this clip along with three other composers. Um, and we already did a video where we sort of uh, had a live reveal of our scores to each other. Um, so we could kind of share our reactions to each other's work. Um, and in that video, we talked a little bit about kind of some of our approaches and that kind of stuff. Um, but I just want to make this so that I could go a little bit further into my approach and uh, kind of how I structured this and a little bit more into my sort of thought process, um, how I approach something like this. Um, so my initial impressions of this score were that it, uh, or of the clip rather, were that it was quite big and epic, um, and it felt a lot like a trailer, um, because with this, I felt like it was, you know, kind of just giving us the beginning of a story. Um, so I decided to approach it that way, and so I structured it like I would structure a trailer track. Um, before we sort of jump into that a little bit, I'm just going to play through everything from start to finish. So let's have a listen through um, of everything with including the sort of sound effects and dialogue. Relax, David. Just tell us what you know. It was just a routine mapping mission. Another. No hope colonization prospect. But they'd been watching us. Studying. Running. They made it clear we weren't welcome. Before we knew it, they were coming. So just start jumping in, talking about the structure a bit. Um, so you can see that I've got these kind of markers that I laid out. Um, and so I put these as I've got an intro section and then act one, act two, act three, and an outro. So I mentioned I scored this like a trailer, kind of giving it the structure that a trailer would have. Um, so typically a uh, trailer track you would write away from picture and you would kind of include these so you would present your initial kind of thematic material that would be a sort of exposition section then the second section would be a kind of a build-up so starting to develop that material a bit more and then the third section would be kind of this is your big theme this is everything full out um, and kind of a full development of that initial idea and then an outro section. So this might be a little bit of a recap, uh, which might contain some of that same material. So first let's look at act one in order to look at how I have um, approached kind of this intro section. So I'll do this with just the music. So just a little bit um, to refresh our memory. So with this section, let's have a quick look at the uh, first kind of this theme idea on the piano. This becomes a kind of primary texture throughout this score. So I've got this motif. And then this just starts to develop a little bit as I kind of change the harmony around slightly. But this texture sort of serves me through most of this. Um, 
And I just chose something here. It's this essentially uh, the D and an A, so sort of open fifth with this flat six. So it just makes it seem a little bit uh, kind of spooky, a little bit um, sort of otherworldly. Um, quite often, this is part of a scale which you know you can use, uh, or which is used in lots of sci-fi stuff or kind of space fantasy, that kind of stuff. Um, so not really reinventing the wheel with this, um, but just trying to pick something that makes sense harmonically. So then this intro section, this is essentially just some atmosphere that helps kind of wet the palate a bit, that helps lead us into this um, initial idea. So in that atmosphere, I've essentially just got an open fifth. It's just in different octaves, different Ds and As, um, and I'm creating lots of different textures and having them sort of come in and out of each other um, so that we just get an initial taste of the sort of sound world of the palette that we're going to be hearing. So along with this um, textural motif here, I have a, this kind of melody that comes in. Now, this is in the bassoon. And I'll just play through what this initial theme is. So now I chose bassoon because I thought bassoon would be something, playing it in this register in itself sounds a bit odd or otherworldly. I mean, it's beautiful in that register, um, but it's something that it's a little bit quirky on its own. However, I thought that wouldn't quite be enough to make it feel otherworldly. I wanted to do something a little bit different to it. So I duplicated this bassoon instrument, the exact same patch, except this one, I've added some kind of guitar effects to. So I put it through some different like tremolo effects and delays and um, kind of different guitar amps and that kind of stuff. So it creates something that now this sounds a bit otherworldly. So that's also mixed in with a lot of other synths that are doing similar things with delays and uh, kind of different tremolo effects, chorus, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's part of this sort of bigger texture. So it's also not just on its own, but um, has some similar sort of sounds within the palette that it's mixed with. Um, I took the original bassoon that's dry or just has a bit of reverb and uh, this bassoon that's going through all the effects. And I kind of balanced them so I could use this sort of distorted alien one and I could bring that in gradually so that I found a nice balance between the two um, without it sort of being completely odd and uh, which could be a little chaotic in the mix and not really come through all the way. And having something that's dry and maybe a bit plain. I uh, use kind of the two of them together just as balancing two separate tracks to try and achieve that. Um, so then this build-up section that comes next is really based around the percussion. Um, it's where I sort of get this more like pulsing bass idea coming in. Um, and this is something that gives it a bit more drive. So just to now have a quick focus on sort of act two of this. So through that section, I also have that uh, motif that we heard in the piano. And now initially it starts kind of more in a uh, synth, um, kind of in a keyboard synth bell sound. And I gradually sort of overlap them so that 
the synth sound fades out and then the piano sound fades in. So we mostly hear something that is a little bit more familiar, um, a little bit more kind of human along with this really pulsing, pulsing kind of ominous percussion um, that's building through that. Uh, there's also a sort of synthy electric bass uh, that's pulsing through that to give it a bit more drive and energy. So, and then of course, I've got a big riser kind of coming up through this 2-4 bar. And then this is the big kind of uh, action, act three. And this is where, again, we now get um, this motif is on the bassoon, this initial kind of um, piano motif. I have this spread across in quite a few different places. So the arrangement here is now huge. To make it really big and um, bold, I've also got this, uh, these big sort of brass octaves happening. Um, so this is just on this D. And part of this is, let's just play through this quickly. So, I'm having them play, you know, super forte, but also pitch bending through this note. So as it goes through, I'm slowly pitch bending that down just to make it a little bit more kind of gritty. So another thing um, that I did with that is I then also made that um, I did the same sort of pitch bend, but I did this by recording live cello. So let's have a listen to just this live cello on its own dry. So this audio has some reverb on it, um, but what I did, I just recorded this uh, here um, at home, and I did, I actually did the pitch bend, so I did these glisses down. So it's not uh, processing or automating that pitch bend um, that's performed. So I wanted to kind of duplicate that with the brass, but just this on its own isn't that big and beefy. So I then put this through some guitar distortion pedals and I created a sound that is much bigger and much grittier. This is now that same cello uh, pitch bends, but with the guitar distortion. So that helped me get something that is much bigger, much bolder, um, and really kind of cuts through for that. So then I took the cello and I panned it left, and then I opened up uh, space on the right. I also have my brass is sort of on the right um, of my stereo image, but I doubled it with this guitar chug too. So now I have, this is guitar that I played in, and then I put through some similar distortion. And so now I've got the cello and the guitar together. So that gives me this really bold kind of uh, low mids along with that brass, and this helps give it this really full, rich sound. Um, it's quite gritty, especially towards the low end. Um, so then, just to sort of round this out, this outro um, is really just a callback to some of the textures that I use, these sort of string harmonics and stuff that I used in the intro, but then just on top of that sort of same motif um, that I use. So I had that motif here, big. I also had it in the strings um, for this climactic section, big uh, 
kind of multiple octaves in the violins. And then at the end, I bring it down back to this sort of synthy um, sound. So in this, I just use for the outro. So that just gives me a nice sort of callback uh, right at the end there. Um, so let's just listen through now one more time um, through the whole score. Um, and I'm going to play it this time only with the music. Great, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, feel free to write if you have any questions in the comments or feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, I am also currently running a sale for Black Friday on my own online course. Um, so feel free to check that out. There should be a link to that in the description. Um, QTube members also get uh, a, always have a discount um, through the course, um, but if you support uh, if you buy the course through this Black Friday sale through the QTube link, you're also supporting the QTube. Um, so some of that goes back to them as well. Um, so thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon.